spooky review people of course it wouldn't be a spooky review if Minnie didn't put her tail in front of <laughs> in front of the camera hello how are you guys doing it's been quite a while since I have done a spooky review and so here we are back in the spooky study <laughs> with Mr. Ozzy Oswald and I got a new uh, candelabra did the electrical myself and I'm so proud of myself got it at a th um, oddity shop of all places so anyway let's enough of that let's talk about movies now you guys there are so many movies that my husband and I watch we go almost every week to the movies unless there's just nothing to watch and pretty much we're always seeing horror movies so many that it's hard to keep track I mean I literally need to start writing these down because when I said hey I'm going to record something to share with you guys some movies that we've watched and what we think of them I literally couldn't think of them and I know that I'm missing a ton because not only do I watch a bunch of movies in the theater every week but I also watch them at home and so I'll have to do another video or maybe at the end of this, I'll do some research and just put a list of different movies um, that you can watch and where you can stream them. Because at the moment I'm doing this recording, I cannot for the life of me think of the, t the titles of some of the streaming movies that you can get. Tubi is great too because there's a lot of movies on Tubi that you can get for free. I know that's not in every country, but you'll just have to find where you can get it for free or even if you have to pay for it in streaming okay but let's go ahead and let's delve into this first I'm going to say that I'm just going to give you an overall of what I felt about it and I'm not giving you any spoilers so you don't have to worry that it's going to spoil you and there are some movies that I'm going to tell you I'm about to watch and I will come back later and I'll talk about it so the first thing is we are going today we are going to see a movie called blink twice now, it has Tatum Channing in it. I think I'm saying, I always want to say it backwards, Channing Tatum, but I think it's Tatum Channing. If I have it backwards, you'll let me know in the comments. He has a movie out, and I was so happy to see him, Tatum Channing, in a horror movie. This was awesome to see. He's pretty diverse, and he's done a lot of different types of movies, so I was really happy to see him in this, this thriller-slash-horror movie. And it's called Blink Twice, and it, the basic, um, the the basic premise of it seems to be that he's a famous guy. I don't know too much about it, and I try and avoid watching too many trailers because nowadays they just give the whole story away. But basically, he seems to be a famous person. Maybe he's a famous actor. I'm not sure yet. And he's disappeared out of the public eye for a while, and it's because he bought an island, and he's been off doing some shenanigans on an island. And it seems pretty, you know, if you owned an island and you were popular and going to a lot of parties and you were the life of the party, that you would always invite people back to your island to have more parties. And it seems like that's a pretty standard thing that someone would do in his position, and he does it. But then something weird starts happening on the island. And what I found really interesting is that there's a lot of people there. The initial first thing that you see in the trailer that makes you uncomfortable is the fact that when everyone gets there, they collect everybody's cell phones. Now, that is never a good idea because when someone does something like that, they're taking away a person's power and ability to say no, to get out of something if they want to get out of it. And so right off the bat, you know, oh, no, this is this is not good. <laughs> this is not, you know, put your just for dinner, put it away. This is I'm confiscating everybody who's here now stuck on this island with me. I'm taking all of your personal power away. So right off the bat, you know, something is not going to be good happening here. And the element that I thought was really interesting is they deal with people losing their memory but we don't know why they lose their memory, right? And people start disappearing, but not everybody remembers these people. So I'm very interested to see what is the backstory to, to all of this? What are they doing? You know, the obvious thing is, oh, maybe they're drugging people. But there's some other parts to the story where 
weird things are happening like they come back you know they wake up the next day and there's a bunch of dirt in their nails and they don't know how it got there that's the part that's like okay what what's going on here what's in the background are they you know doing some weird stuff where they're forcing people to like fight each other or kill pe kill each other and then they drug them up where they don't remember what they did the day before but then someone's missing you know, as a writer, I'm already in my head, like creating the backstory. And it's funny because a lot of times when I'm, uh, we're getting close to the end of a movie, you know, at home or whatever. And I'll, I'll say, this is what's happening. And it's not something that anyone told, you know, you didn't see it coming and I'll tell my husband, okay, this is what I think is, is really going on. And then it turns out to be true. So we'll see what happens in Blink Twice, but I'm going to see that today. And I'm hopeful for it because he's, you know, a blockbuster actor. But what I'm really happy about is that it's usually these types of films rely on heavy storyline. And some of the other movies that we see that we know and love um, rely on a lot of jump scares. And that's okay, too, because all horror movies are not all the same. They're like on a spectrum, right? Some of them are blockbusters and they're going to they're going to watch like watching a true true crime story or a documentary that's taking you from the beginning to the end or maybe it's flashing you back and forth but it's giving you a history of how this person became who they are or how it all came to be and I love those because there's a deeper storyline that you have to follow and pay attention to and it's not relying on all jump scares just to be fun and then there are those films that there is a storyline, but obviously there's a lot of things that got cut in the editing because they're relying on a lot of jump scares to give you that fun jolt. And those have a place in horror too. You love them. Then there's some that are just completely like campy, quirky, weird, funny. They're funny because they're so gory and so stupid. And, you know, us horror lovers, there's a place for that too. So I, I love the idea of this one today, going to see that and getting my popcorn because I'm going to actually see a movie that has a longer thread that I have to think and pay attention to. And I'm excited for that. So I will come back with a review on that and probably other movies. Okay, another one that we saw, um, M. Night Shyamalan has a lot of movies that seem to be coming out with his daughters. And um, one of them is Trap. And Trap is interesting. Um, I liked it, but... I will tell you, it, you know, it's about a, a, they tell us up front, you know, the guy is taking his daughter to see a, a concert and the concert, the, sing, the singer ends up being M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, who is actually a real singer and created this whole album for this movie. I guess it, it, there's a benefit to having a famous father, right? <laughs> so, but they all have their own talents too. So we don't want to diminish that as well, but what a leg up. That's awesome. Um, so this dad, they tell us from the get go that this dad is a serial killer. He's a wanted serial killer called the butcher. And this whole premise is about, he gets in there and then realizes it was a trap set for him because somehow, and we never know this until the very end, he, they knew he was going to be there, but they don't know who he is. And so they're looking for him. And, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but what I am going to say is that, you know, in a lot of movies, we, there might be something in the movie and we go, eh, that's so unrealistic. That wouldn't happen. But because it's just one thing and the rest of the movie is good and fun and we're having a good time with it, we give it a pass. We know that that one thing was pretty unrealistic, but we give it a pass because we're really enjoying it. Well, this movie trap has about 20 of those things in it. There are so many things that you would go, it takes you out of the story because you know that you absolutely, that would never happen in real life. You know, people, first of all, are not that selfless. Uh, people's own instinct to survive would prevent them from doing certain things that happen in this movie. Um, all the way down to, you know, when you are a famous person and have an entourage and management, there's a lot of things that happen in this movie that absolutely just would never happen. But that doesn't mean that we don't enjoy the ride, and we absolutely do. We have a fun time on this journey, despite the fact there's about 20 things in this film that just would never happen. It's totally unrealistic. 
And yet we like being scared and we like where it's going. The actors in this movie, the husband and the wife, I don't remember what their names are, but I do remember that the wife, she, I always loved her because one, she's in Picard, but also before that she was in Midnight in Paris and she was one, she was um, Mrs. Fitzgerald. And I absolutely love her in that because, you know, she's, she's, She's just a quirky, crazy character, and she's a spitfire, and I love a line in that where she says, you know, that her, she wants, you know, she's trying to be a writing, but her real talents are in drinking, and I, I just love that line. So anyway, she's a great actress, and she's in this playing the wife. I really enjoyed the acting of these characters, but the, the, the part of the story that really took me out of the story was how many unrealistic things and decisions are made in here that just would not happen. But again, you have a blast on the ride anyway. And so this is probably one of the lesser uh, M. Night Shyamalan films that, that I like because it's one thing to be serious about these things, these little faux pas that you're going to put in here. And then there's a thing where you're doing it and you don't realize that it's, it's, it's a faux pas. It's, it's meant to not be serious. You know, my husband thinks that maybe he put all these in here intentionally, but I don't believe that. I think that it was part of the storyline. None of his other movies do that intentionally. He's a seri serious about his storylines. I don't think he intentionally put in these things that are pulling you out of the story because they're so unrealistic with the decisions that are made by these characters. Um, but at the same time, I still love all of the bits and pieces of it, and I do really like it. So, you know, one out of five, I'm going to give it still give it a four, four screams out of five it loses a whole star because of all the unrealism but the the it's a beautifully made movie um the visuals are beautiful the acting is great on all parties the music is nice of course m night has a, a a spot in there too as he does in all of his movies he has a cameo but he doesn't do a um his cameo is quite long in this one. Okay, let's get to another one that he did, and I think it's called The Watchers, but there's been a couple different movies with a similar title, so I'm hoping that I do that right. The Watchers, they're in a they're they're in a forest. This girl's car breaks down. She has a bird in a cage. She's on her way to bring this, I believe if I'm remembering this right, to bring this bird to someone and her car breaks down in the middle of this wilderness, and so she's got to walk herself out of it. And she finds herself in the wilderness, and there's this cabin type of place, and there's other people there, and you, and all of these things unfold. Again, no spoilers here. I found this one to be more of a, an M. Night Shyamalan movie because they didn't show you everything. M. Night's... Um, excellent movies that he's always done has been because he doesn't share all he doesn't share with you a hundred percent the monster he gives you clips of who the monster is in trap he showed us right up front the monster was the guy we already saw who the monster was and now we just have to sit back and like see what happens and that's fun too that's a different type of journey but i find that i really enjoy m night Shyamalan and what he doesn't show us up front he may give us clips of the monster throughout time and he he kind of keeps us in suspense and at the end he might show us the entire thing um but i get more joy out of what he doesn't show us and then we kind of know what happens at the very end and i love that about his movies my most favorite movies with him is when he's doing that when he holds us in suspense you know holds us in captivity to this monster that we haven't seen yet and so the watchers is very much that and i give that one five stars i absolutely loved that movie and i did love the storyline and where they went with it i thought it was wonderful so i highly highly recommend that especially for people who are um, super M. Night Shyamalan fans, you know, if you if you liked Signs and um, The Village and, you know, all of those things that M. Night Shyamalan is known for, even, uh, what is it, Devil, I think you're going to like Watchers. So I give that five screens. Okay, Exorcist 2. I was surprised. I saw no advertising of Exorcist 2 at all. And then all of a sudden, when I'm looking on my Regal app, 
Exorcist 2 is there at a time when there wasn't any other movies showing that we had already seen the scary movies we wanted to see and that just popped up. And I have to say that it is scary. There's a lot of jump scares in it. Um, but it's just not the greatest movie in the world, you know. And I was surprised because Exorcism 1 with the actor, what's his name? He played in A Beautiful Mind. Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe is an amazing actor. Oh, you want to see my baby? This is my new baby. Look, say hi. You want to be part of Spooky Review? Yes, you part Spooky Review? Wow, 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 wow. Oh, you my baby, you my precious. Okay, you go do whatever you're going to do. My kitty baby talk. You going to go sit up there now? So they have a little bed right here that there's, they get to sit in. So where was I? Exorcist 2. So Russell Crowe was in this and it was scary, but I didn't find that it was scary in the sense that I, you know, when you really take a movie serious and you're really locked in and you're, you're getting this storyline, it just was missing something. And yet I'm still giving it a four screams because I enjoyed the jump scares. I enjoyed the storyline, but it was just missing something. And I don't even know what it is that I can tell you that it was missing. Maybe it's the storyline. Maybe they didn't show enough. I really don't know, you know, looking back at it, what exactly it was that made me not take it as serious as I do some other movies. And maybe it's because the Exorcist one that he played in, there was such a strong storyline. It felt so much bigger. And it, it, even though it was still small setting because it all took place in a house, and in Exorcist 2 with Russell Crowe, it all takes place, well, it takes place in his apartment and it also takes place on a set. Still both very small setting, but it didn't feel as blockbuster as the first one did. And maybe the storyline and everything of the first one laid that foundation for me that was not there in part two. So um, I'm giving that four screams because it still was scary. It was still fun to go and sit through and watch and eat popcorn. It still had great visuals and it had a lot of jump scares in it that I absolutely love. So I'd still say you can stream it and you'll enjoy it. Get your popcorn out. You'll have fun. Don't expect it to be this blockbuster with a, a super deep storyline that all makes sense. Just go there to have fun and to get scared. Long legs. Okay, I'm going to finish with long legs and cuckoo. First of all, cuckoo, I've been seeing great reviews on it. They say go in blind. Dan Stevens, who played in Eurovision as the Russian, is my favorite. He also played on Downton Abbey. If you guys are Downton Abbey fans, I absolutely loved him. And he, I didn't know he took, well, he took such a risky step of leaving because he didn't, he was getting bored with the same type of role. And boy, has he just gone into the spectrum of playing different roles and he does it so well. Dan Stevens is amazing. And so I'm excited to see Cuckoo. I am going to be streaming that one this weekend. It's I've been told to go into it blind and the more blind you go into it, the more fun you have with it. It's supposed to be a very weird, strange movie and I absolutely love it. It's going to have a lot of scares. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to have a lot of jump scares in it, but it's a weird storyline and I just can't wait to see that one. The one I want to finish with is called Long Legs. I give it five screams. Ah! I'm not going to tell you any details about this. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. What I am going to say is that People were classifying this right up there with Silence of the Lambs, and I understand why. When I first was watching it, I was like, why are they why are they putting that in the same category as Silence of the Lambs? And I think they're doing that because Silence of the Lambs stayed with you. You were terrified of this this character that was a serial killer. And he was just weird. Whenever you put a, a man in a in a scary position especially when he's playing a serial killer but you make him look like a woman and you and he's talking in a womanly voice that is overly trying to talk in a woman's voice and he's saying really creepy things and his face is a face that's hard to look at 
And what I love about long legs, I hope I explained that right. It's 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 very it's very difficult to explain this other than his face was very difficult to look at. And if you were to see this person out, you would immediately, your body would just have all these red flags. I mean, you would like, you'd go into flight and get away from this person because of the things he's saying and the way he's saying it and the way he looks is terrifying and he sounds terrifying and he's, he's weird and saying a lot of these weird things. But the cool thing is, is they don't give it to you all up front. They give it to you in clips. You know, you see winter, which creates a mood. That's the first clip that you get is this car just sitting out there in winter. And a little girl who's innocent sees, sees this and goes outside. And you're like, don't go outside, honey. What are you going out there for? But she does it anyway. And then we don't get to see all what happens. We get flashbacks. And there's a larger storyline that you follow it does not rely on jump scares, but a scary story. That doesn't mean that there aren't some jump scares in there. There are. It's just a terrifying process of them not really letting you see this person either. You only get pieces of their face at different times or a piece of their face with them saying something. It's, it's a very terrifying thing because they're not letting you see the person we know is a horrifying person. We know that they are the source of all this horror, but they're not letting us see it all and they're not letting us know all of it. And then they introduce us to this other character who is very kind of on the spectrum, it seems like, and in the way that she communicates and it's clear that she's been traumatized by something, but nobody that she's working with in the FBI really knows anything about her that way. And so we're really discovering this character as well and what she's been through. And I'm not going to tell you anymore because if I told you this thing I was about to say, it would give a lot away. So it really, it, it's a great movie. I give it five screams all the way. It's definitely a blockbuster. I heard that it, when I was looking into it, it was, it had already grossed over $90 million and it had been in the theater for a while. So I thought, you know, instead of going to see Cuckoo, uh, let's go and see Long Legs while we can still get it in the theater because it's been there for quite a while and I don't want to miss that. And it's a blockbuster. It's a, it's something that's really doing well in the theater. So I want to go see that one on the big screen. And so I highly recommend that you guys go see that. I give it five screens. It was pretty terrifying. And, and although I didn't understand initially while they were comparing it to the silence of the lambs, I figured it out later because I was laying in bed that night and I was thinking of the scary person's face and what they were, how they were talking, very crazy. Oh, it just scared me how they were talking and the 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 way their face looked and their scary life and and who they were as a person and the darkness and all of this stuff. It was just terrifying. So you know, I'm closing my eyes and getting flashes of this person, and I'm like, ah, there's Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. I wouldn't watch another scary movie after that for a long long time. I would not watch anything that was like, I still to this day don't like watching um, violent movies that show a lot of blood and guts. I won't watch those. But Silence of the Lamb was terrifying to me and it gave me nightmares and I couldn't watch anything scary for a long time after that. Obviously I've gotten over it. But then, you know, when I went to go to bed and then had that in my head, it that that was the last time that I had that type of nightmare was when I watched Silence of the Lambs. So there's the connection for me of why they were comparing it because it was just so freaky. And if you love freaky, you are going to love it. So I highly recommend that you go watch all these movies. Just when you go into movies, the thing to know is just understand why, what kind of movie they are. Understand that horror is on a spectrum and you're, and you might know up front what kind of horror you're going to get. Sometimes you don't, but just understand the spectrum so that when you go in, you can kind of put it in, put it in the category of horror that it is so that you can still walk away saying, yeah, I really enjoyed that experience. Even if it's not a blockbuster or the threads of the you know story didn't all pan out or you didn't know things or understand the endings or all of that stuff, you can still put it in its category where you enjoyed the experience of watching the horror movie. 
that is my advice to you. I will come back to you with more ho horror movies that I watch. I will definitely let you know what I thought after watching Blink Twice and Cuckoo. And I will come back at you and we will do this all over again. So if you enjoyed this, hey, why don't you guys tell me down below what movies have you watched lately? If you have any movie recommendations for me to watch, please let me know because there are so many freaking movies out there that I just... I missed or you know I was raising babies during you know for many years and I missed a lot of things so if you guys have any movies you want me to watch please put those down below but tell me which movies also that you've been watching and what you thought of them even give me how many screams you thought each one of the movies I talked about write those in the comments and tell me how many screams you gave it okay so with that being said I will see you guys next time stay spooky Thanks for watching.